Okay, so we're going to take a look at the midpoint of a line segment here. Um, if you missed the proof uh, that I did, it's in the other video. I'm going to link it in the in the, the above right here if you want to click on it and check out why this is true. But essentially what it's saying is that for a given line segment, you have any line segment at all, and I have, let's say I have the point A and the point B. If I want to find the midpoint of that line segment, let's say it's right about here, the midpoint is a point equidistant to both your points A in this case and B. The only thing you have to do to find the midpoint of this line segment, that midpoint, is you average out your x's, i.e. add them up divided by 2, add up your y's, and divide them by 2, and you'll have the midpoint, which means the distance from this point to point B and the distance from this point to point A are the same. It's exactly in the middle. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples uh, how this would work here. So let's look at our first example here. So first example here, just application. Uh, it says find the midpoint of the line segment having the following endpoints. So I would encourage you guys to do a very rough sketch of where these points are because as we go throughout, you start applying this formula. It's good to have some uh, reference uh, where everything's at. So I'm saying point A is roughly here and maybe point B is, is somewhere up here. Right? You just need a rough sketch. Okay, now that I have point A, and point B drawn here, I'm looking to find the midpoint. So I don't know, maybe it's somewhere right about here. How do you find it? First of all, how do you label it? This would be labeled as M for midpoint subscript AB. And how do we calculate it? Well, we add up our X's and divide by two, and we add up our Y's, in this case, three and seven, and divide by two. So if I do that here, we end up getting one and five. So the midpoint of this line segment, i.e. the distance, from 1, 5 to B and 1, 5 to A are the same. And again, you could even check uh, doing your distance formula. You could go ahead and calculate this and see that the distance are in fact the same. Okay, let's take a look at this question here. So again, I encourage you guys, you have your Cartesian plane here. Do a rough sketch of where you think the points are at. So you got the point 4, negative 5. Uh, maybe it's right about here. Then the point 6 and 3. So maybe we're roughly uh, right about here. All right, let's connect these up. Okay, and I'm looking to find the midpoint. So I've got point S and T. Okay, well, I don't know. Let's say it's right about here. Now, keep in mind, I have this below the x-axis. It could be above the x-axis. Again, this is just a visual sketch for me, but that's why we do the math on this to see. So if I want to calculate the midpoint here, the midpoint I would label as M, the midpoint of line segment ST. And how do you calculate that? Well, you add up your x's. So in this case here, right, you can label this x1, y1, x2, y2. You add up your x's and divide by 2. And then we add up our y's and divide by 2. And when I do that here, I get 5 and negative 1. So I was right, it actually is below the x-axis, but that's your midpoint. Now, like I was saying here, let's label this 5, negative 1. Now we got our midpoint. Let's go ahead and actually verify this, that the distances are in fact the same. So what I'm going to calculate here, I'll label this with an M. I want to calculate the distance from M to T. I want to see what that comes out to be here. So if I calculate the distance from M to T, let's go ahead and, and do that. So that's going to be equal to the square root of, let's write our formula down, x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Okay, well, I'm going to label this x1, y1, and I'll label my point t, x2, y2. So what would the distance be? Well, this will be uh, 6 minus 5 squared plus y2 is going to be 3 minus negative 1 quantity squared, in which case here we get uh, 1 squared plus 4 squared is going to be the root of 17 for this one here. Okay. Let's go ahead here. I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so we can kind of see what we're doing here. I'm going to erase this. Now I want to calculate the distance from M to S. And I'm, I should get the same. I should get root 17 on this. So let's go ahead and label this. So I'm going to keep my X1, Y1 uh, as the M value here. And I'll label this time, this will be X2, Y2. Okay, so the formula is x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. 
So x2 is going to be 4 minus 5 squared plus y2 is negative 5 minus negative 1 squared is going to equal uh, negative 1 squared plus negative... Now watch out here. This is negative 5 minus negative 1 is negative 4 quantity squared. And again, don't forget those squaring those minus signs because they're in the brackets are positive, in which case here I once again get root of negative 17. So like we were talking about here, you do in fact have the midpoint because these lengths, the length from m to t and the length from m to s are the same. And because of that, uh, this is in fact the midpoint. Okay, so obviously you don't have to do this every time. You can just add up your x's and y's divided by 2. But uh, algebraically, you're verifying that the formula is in fact correct. And in this case here, you can see that it is. All right, let's take a look at this next example here. It's kind of like a twist on your formula here. It says one, one endpoint of a line segment has coordinates negative 3 and negative 1. Let's go ahead and kind of do a sketch. And this is I'm trying to encourage you guys to sketch these out because it definitely makes things later on a little bit easier. So negative 3, negative 1 is maybe right about here. Now this is an endpoint, so negative 3, negative 1. Now they actually say here the midpoint of the line segment is 1, 1. So 1, 1 is maybe right here. This is the midpoint of the line segment. What is the location of the other end? So now they're kind of flipping it on you. They gave you the, in this question, they gave you one endpoint. Let's label it A. I'm going to label this point that we want to find B. If I don't know it, I'm going to label this X1, Y1. This point here, by definition, is M, A, B, right? It'd be the midpoint of A, B. So in this question here, they gave you the endpoint, they gave you a midpoint, and they want you to find the other endpoint this time. Well, how can we do this? Well, what do we know? I know that, yeah, okay, the point AB is equal to 1, 1, but it's also equal to something else. It's equal to X1 plus X2 divided by 2, and it's equal to Y1 plus Y2 divided by 2. But if this is X1, Y1, this would obviously be X2, Y2 which means this is actually x1 minus 3 over 2, and this is y1 minus 1 over 2. But therefore, what we have here is, as you can see here, that my midpoint of AB is equal to this expression, but it is also equal to 1, 1. So therefore, we can conclude, since this is, since this is also equal to 1, 1, therefore, these coordinates must be equal to each other x1 minus 3 must equal 2, and likewise y1 minus 1 must equal 1. So from this we get two equations. One equation says x1 minus 3 has to equal 1, and likewise y1 minus 1, or sorry, yeah, y1 minus 1 divided by 2 has to equal 1. So we can actually solve these here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to move these over here. We can go ahead and solve them. Right? If I'm going to solve this, Multiply across by 2 and add 3, I get x1 is 5. Multiply across by 2 and add 1, I get y1 is 3. So therefore, the point B is 5, 3. So this point right here is the point 5, 3. Okay, so that's just a, kind of a flip on what you guys are used to seeing here. Uh, where you're using your midpoint formula, but they give you the endpoint, and the midpoint, you unwind it um, to find your other endpoint. All right? Thank you.